Welcome back to Learn SKN, and today we have the May June 2020 paper one for Caribbean history. That's the May June 2020 paper one for Caribbean history. Now, this one is a little bit different in terms of the the overall appearance and things like that. It was given to me by a member of the community, so much appreciation for that. Much thanks, many thanks for that one. We, that's what we love. We love the sharing in the community. We love that other people are not holding on to everything and the sharing the love and that's good. You know who you are, so big up one time and thanks for the link up. Alright, so let's just jump right into this one. Number one, which of the following best explains why the indigenous people migrated to the Americas from their original homeland? And so this one is a, a oldie but goodie. It's been on many a paper. And so it's A, they were following a herd of deer which they hunted. So they were following herd of, herds of deer, which they hunted. Number two, the Kalinagos went on seafaring expeditions in vessels called, and so we have the answer here being B, the Pyragas. Right? So those are the ones that the Kalinagos used. Number three, which of the following is an activity in which the mayor engaged in which they may engage and the answer for this one is c building temples and so uh, these history in itself that there's no working out uh, an explanation required and things like that it's just once you remember your name your dates and things like that you should be sorted and you can write you can you know answer based on those things so yes yeah, so the building of temples so you know the, the mayors had their flat temple their flat pyramid sorry the pyramid temples that were flat and there are some evidence of that today and you can see them in the uh, native areas all right so the mayors wrote using a type of writing called hieroglyphics all right so that's what we know about that they were writing on the they started writing on they were one of the first people to have a written language and this is the hieroglyphic and you can see evidence of that written on temples and things like that that are still around today Number five, as at Columbus' arrival in the Caribbean, both Jamaica and Cuba were C, inhabited by the Tainos. Inhabited by the Tainos. Those are the, the larger islands and they were inhabited by the Tainos. Some of the smaller islands were inhabited by the Kalinagos. And of course, the mayors would be more Central America. And so that's how we understand this one. Number six. The main reason why the English attempted to break the Spanish monopoly in the New World was to A, B, obtain a share of the wealth of the New World. And that's obvious. The Spanish had the monopoly on the New World after the Treaty of Tordesillas was signed. The Spanish basically wanted to control what they thought was their discovery. And so a lot of the other European nations found that there were a lot of wealth to be had from engaging in the New World. And so the there was that's why we had a lot of buccaneering, a lot of pirateering and stuff like that because everybody wanted to break the monopoly. And the main reason for that was of course to get a share of the gold and the glory and everything in the new world. We want to share of the wealth to obtain wealth from the new world. Number seven, which of the following is a town council in the Spanish American Empire. And so we have the Cabildos, those were the town council, the Cabildos. Then we have number eight. The Dutch may be called the foster fathers of the French and British settlers in the Caribbean in the 1600s because they, and the answer is B, kept the settlers supplied with essential goods. So after where the Dutch decided, hey, we ain't into no slave trade and anything like that. We ain't into all of that. We just cut out of that. Let's just look at the re trading of goods. And so the Dutch became the main go-to persons for trading certain items certain essential goods with the rest settlements the english and the french and the all the, the, those settlements the dutch were the ones who traded with them because you know the slave thing was a little too much for the dutch in a sense or uh, they had little to no interest in that slave part just the goods number nine which is the correct order of the 15th century european social groups from most to least powerful so the most powerful of course would be the monarchy king so I see the, the king, then the king would be closely advised by the priest and the priest them had a lot of control, especially 
when we're talking about the Roman Catholic Church and the Pope, I mean, the, perp, the Pope was the one who divided the world, right? In two. Treated to other sellers. So that Pope had the real power. And then the merchants would have a certain level of clout, a certain level of sway because they got the money and they make the goods go around. And of course, the peasants would be at the bottom of this hierarchy. Number 21st of the following statement. The authorities began the practice of allowing the Spaniards to extract labor and collect tribute from the Indians. In return, the Spaniards were to see that the Indians were protected and converted to Christianity. The, pr the practice referred to in this statement was known as, of course, we have that one as the encomienda system. The encomienda system. Number 11. In the 1600s, Dutch islands in the Caribbean were mainly used as trading stations. So that's C, trading stations. Number 12. Tobacco did not continue as a profitable crop for the Caribbean settlers because of the, of course, we have the Virginia competition right there. The larger area was able to, you know, achieve some level of scale, economies of scale, and so they produced at a cheaper level. And so they had real competition with the Caribbean tobacco. And so the answer is B, competition from Virginia. Number 13, which of the following occurred in Africa as a result of the trade in enslaved Africans? And so D, increased importation of European goods. Remember you had the triangle of trade? And so you had the slaves going out of Africa in exchange for a lot of European centric european made goods so that's they had the triangle right there and then you go to the caribbean and then you have the sugar being traded to going to europe so, so yeah you had a whole lot of things going on there and so the africans were had access now to european items and so they imported more european items number 14 which of the following is best which of the following is true of enslaved persons in the british caribbean and so we have C, they were encouraged by their masters to farm on small provisional grounds. Number 15, the curing house on a Caribbean sugar plantation is associated with D, the removal of molasses from the Moscovado sugar. So the removal of molasses from the Moscovado sugar. And you can see a lot of the other options don't really make much sense. Curing for the sick, no. Caring for the poor white, no. Packing of the sugar from, no. So curing is just getting the molasses out of the, of the muscovado, the slimy stuff, the sticky stuff, to get the sugar ready for proper use. All right, number 16. Which of the following conditions did not result from the revolution in Haiti? Did not. And so A, the mulattoes were wiped out. There was no genocide. There was no wiping out of the mulattoes. They still existed after the revolution. Number 17, which of the following is true of the Maroons of Jamaica and Suriname? And the answer is D, they wage guerrilla warfare on white plantations. Number 18, which of the following were consequences of the Haitian Revolution? And you have some options here. One, all enslaved Africans were freed. Two, all the mulattoes left the island. Three, the colony gained political independence. And so you have, you have seen this question before. And so the answer is B. One and two, which is all enslaved Africans were freed, and three, the colony gained political independence. Number 19, which of the following causes is common to Barbados Rebellion in, of 1816 and the Jamaican Rebellion of 1831? And so the best answer here is, of course, D, enslaved Africans thought that their freedom was being withheld by the planters. And so because they thought they were being retailed, that's when they started warring and rising up against the planters. Number 20. Which slave revolt forced the British government to give serious consideration to the emancipation proposal? And they have D, the Christmas Rebellion. The Christmas Rebellion. Number 21. The arguments that the British humanitarians used against slavery in the 1800s were mainly and of course you have b moral all right moral the, the economic argument came in a lot later on and of course you had one of our famous west indian scholars authors writing a book on how the eco economics was one of the car the cause why slavery ended he had eric williams writing capitalism and slavery a very good read you should try and read that one and that highlights how 
economics played a role in the abolition of slavery. Number 22, the main source of disputes between planters and formerly enslaved persons during apprenticeship was a wage rates because the farmers them the, the planters didn't really want to pay the well should i say freed emancipated slaves anything they thought that they could use, use the apprenticeship period to still get free labor and so that created a lot of friction a lot of issues number 23 which is the following was the main purpose of the policy of amelioration in a b improving the conditions of the enslaved which of the following was the main purpose but it did not live up, live up to the purpose of course and so i mean that's not the intention but again during apprenticeship and those times people just want cheaper free labor because you know they are accustomed to paying for this thing 24 which of the following describes how most planters and colonial assemblies reacted to the amelioration b they completely rejected or largely ignored the proposal they don't want to take care of the farmer slaves, the, the freed people. You know, so that's an issue we have there. 25. The reason Baptist missionaries gave for organizing privileges immediately after emancipation was to D. Get some more members for their churches. Right? Get some more members for their churches. 26. Which of the following push factors led to the migration of East Indians to the Caribbean? You have some options here, civil war, the case system, and unemployment. And the best answer is C, which is 2 and 3, which is the case system, and the unemployment. 27. The main purpose of Indian immigration was to secure B, cheap labor for the sugar plantation. Again, they still want this cheap labor thing, and so they reach out to the Indians who they, well, of course, it's not going to be free. But it's still cheaper than the only available labor right there. 28. Which, which factor best explains why the East Indian did not return home immediately after their term of indentureship was over? And the answer A. Some of them accepted grants of money or land. That's one of the biggest differences between indentureship and slavery. At the end, the slaves got zero, zilch, nothing. But in dentorship, at the end, they got something, whether the money or land, which kind of helped them to, you know, build some bill from something instead of zero, right? Land could change generations. Whatever the money is, invest in that, and that could change for generations. But the black man, the the, the farmer slaves, the freedmen, they got did they got nothing. Twenty nine indentured workers from Madeira, Madeira brought elements. Of a culture to the British Caribbean from which of the following cultures were were these elements drawn and so we've had this question already again and of course Portuguese number 30 the majority of immigrants brought to work in the Car British Caribbean in the years between emancipation and the First World War were employed as C unskilled laborers so that's C unskilled laborers number 31 which of the following is the most significant factor explaining the colonial office's lack of support for the establishment of free villages? And the answer is D, desire to maintain labor for plantation. Again, they just don't want to give up the free labor. They just don't want to give up the free labor. 32. The main source of evidence to support the peasantry positive contributions to the economy of the British West Indies in the latter part of the 19th century was an increase in the A, production of a variety of cash crops. And so they say variety because you had the you had a lot of economic diversification going on around these times where people stayed away from just monoculture sugar and they started venturing into other crops. And so you had a lot of varieties out there. A variety of cash crops. All right, 33. Which of the following was not a means by which freed Africans acquired land after emancipation? And of course, D, receiving crown, free crown lands. Not, 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 no way that happened. All right, so the indentured, they got the land. But of course, the freed Africans, they got nothing. Right, they got nothing. So receiving free crown lands, wouldn't that have been lovely? Number 34. 
which the following was a re was a result of the development of the peasantry in the British Caribbean after 1838, after the real emancipation, you know, after apprenticeship finished everything, 1838. And so we have one, diversification of the economy, which is true. Two, legal recognition of the practice of obia. And three, a growing a growing sense of independence among freed Africans. And so the best answer is one and two, diversification of the economy and the recognition of the practice of obia. Right? So you're talking about 1800s here. There's no way any slave or any freed Africans, so the terminology has changed, they're not slaves, it's freed Africans. The growing, the there's a sense of independence among the growing freed, uh, among the freed Africans. There's no sense that I wasn't even anyway close. Thirty-five. Which of, the, which of the following crops was most likely to be sold in a peasant market? And so you have cotton, toma tobacco, sugarcane, sweet potatoes. Now, if you look at the list right here, all these are crops that were once planted and harvested by freed Africans: tobacco, sugarcane, cotton. And so you know that's high quality for the planter. That's that's the, the that's the cash crop for the planter. And so none of these would be really sold on the present market. And so the best answer is sweet potatoes. Thirty six. Which, which of the following clauses from the Jones Act shows that it was just as restrictive as the the Fuaka Act? And so we have a veto powers granted to the governor. So the governor can just do what he wants still, right? Just do what he wants still. In a real power, the governor can do what they want still to veto any decision. 37. Which of the following Caribbean territories was not occupied by the United States military force in early 1900s? And so we have Cuba, Haiti, Jamaica, Dominican Republic. And so the best answer is, of course, Jamaica. 38. The policy by which the United States government was actively involved in directing the financial affairs of the caribbean between 1905 and 1930 was known as of course that's when talking about financial that's dollar diplomacy all right a dollar diplomacy all right 39 which of the following presidents of the united states was responsible for the ooh, this one is a little hard to to see good neighbor policy the good neighbor policy and so we have d Franklin D. Roosevelt. Franklin D. Roosevelt. I mean, they really put a Barack Obama here for real, though. Seriously, a Barack Obama. Really? Wow. Okay, so, Roosevelt. 40. Which of the following was intended mainly to prevent further extension of the European influence in the New World? And so you have A, the Monroe Doctrine. Monroe Doctrine. The America feel that they should rule this side of the world and nobody else should come in. That's the Monroe Doctrine. The Western Hemisphere over here belong to them. And so nobody else is supposed to be a part of this the, the new world. And so they buy, they went and they got built bases here, there, you know, St. Thomas Project, all that kind of thing. 41. Which of the following factors contributed least to the dissatisfaction of the masses during the popular protests in the Caribbean during the 1930s? And so if you look at the 1930s, we are talking about a lot of things that led to the, the, the labor movement that was in the 1930s. And so the least dissatisfaction would be, of course, be inadequate social services. The main thing about the 1930s was the labor movement. And so, of course, low levels of unemployment, low wages to be paid, all those work directly linked to the labor movement. All right, 42. In their effort to improve working conditions around 1900, workers in the British Caribbean most often resorted to B strikes. B strikes. 43. Most Caribbean political leaders in the 1930s advocated constitutional changes mainly to A. Obtain self government. That's how they were trying to move towards independence. Before they can move towards independence. 44. Which of the following persons was an important trade union leader in Grenada in the 1930s? And so we have D, Albert Marishaw. He was the important one for Grenada in particular. 45. 
In many British Caribbean territories during the 1930s, there was a strong link between political parties and a the trade unions. A lot of the I mean you have seen them around the Caribbean, the Labour parties. They're not called Labour parties just because of that. They're called Labour parties because they came out of the Labour movement. A lot of them across the Caribbean, St. Kitts, Antigua, wherever you see a Labour party, they came out of the Labour movement. And so of course trade unions were a big part of the labor movement which of the following female leaders was involved in the labor unrest in 1930s as so we have b elma francois the yeah it was involved in she was involved in the labor unrest all right so that's 30 46 all right 47 funding for the 1958 british West Indian Federation government was obtained from a mandatory levies from cash from sorry each island mandatory levies from each island so that's a everybody had to pay a piece in the pot 48 the majority of French people in the Caribbean objected to assimilation because they be were to were to accept the French culture as superior so they thought the French culture was superior and so they refused to assimilate into the Caribbean uh, culture. 49. For which of the following reasons were citizens of Puerto Rico satisfied with the Commonwealth status offered by the United States? C. The island was guaranteed protection by the US military. As simple as that. They don't mind anything else, just protect us and we're good to go. Number 50. The first Caribbean country to gain its independence was B. Haiti, the Haitian Revolution. 51. Which group of people was ranked directly below the Grand the Grand Blaine in the social hierarchy in Saint Demont in the 18th century? And so we have B D Petite Whites. Petite Whites. <coughs> 52. The arrangement between the Netherlands and her colonies was called C Tripartite Kingdom. The Tripartite Kingdom. Uh, 53. Jose Marti is associated with the struggle for independence in A. Cuba. Cuba. 54. What is the correct order of steps towards full freedom in the British Caribbean? And so we have C. First, the abolition of the slave trade. I think that was 1807, around here. Amelioration. Emancipation, around 1834. Then the apprenticeship finished in 1838 and so that's what we have there that's the, the order in which these things occurred <laughs> 55 universal adult suffrage may be described as the right of all citizens of a specific age to vote and that's b a lot of people fought and died for this particular right so people when you get a chance to vote please do vote a lot of people died for that right Item 56 refers to the following chart which shows sugar production in tons in four carbon territories between the period of 1815 to 1894 in which territory the sugar production experienced a steady decline and we have A1, territory 1, 79, 72, 32, 19. All the rest of them increasing. This one increase, I mean decrease, increase, decrease, so that's a little fluctuation there. This one started slow grow then it went down a bit but yeah this one was number one for sure 57 the cuban sugar industry in the late 19th century received most of its capital from b the united states of america all right 58 the rastafarian belief in the emergence of the king originated from the teachings of c marcus garvey look at these options here nelson mandela he wasn't even, he was, I mean, Rastafarianism might be older than Mandela. Eric Williams, he wasn't into that at all. Che Guevara, he was just the revolutionist in Cuba, as he said, in Cuba, and a number of other coups. All right, 59. Mercantilism was the policy used by the English and French and France to a control the trade of their colonies. The mercantilism control the trade of their colonies. Number 60. Which of the following persons served as Prime Minister of the West Indian Federation? And you have B. You have some stalwarts here, man. Alexander Bustamante. You have Eric Williams. Some real critch, critch low. You have some real stalwarts here. And so, of course, it's B. 
Grantley Adams. All right, so that's it for that paper. You know what to do. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you know when Learn SKN drops another video. All right, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.